A man told his four-year-old son to go to bed upstairs because it was already way past his bedtime. On his way upstairs, the little boy discovered that the stairwell was dark and his hand could not reach the light switch. He became scared and ran back to his dad. And so his dad encouraged him to go upstairs and added that God was upstairs watching over him. He knew that was the final answer and so he had to go upstairs. On his way upstairs, he stepped on the first step and he looked up and yelled, God, please, if you are there, do not move because if you move, you will scare me to death. <laughs> Sometimes the things that God allows to move in us or to move around us may scare us. But they are usually, ultimately, for our own good. Last Sunday, we reflected on the symbolism of water when we are reading the story of Jesus and the Samaritan woman at Jacob's well. Today, our attention is shifting from water to light. And now I have homework for you. At the end of this Mass, I would like you to take your time to go through all the readings of today and note how many times the word light has been mentioned in today's readings. Talking about light, Jesus does not present light as a quality that he has. Rather, he presents light as his essence. He does not say, I have the light. Rather, he says, I am the light of the world. So light is his essence. And in today's gospel passage also, Jesus, who is light, encounters the man who was born blind. And as a result of this encounter, the light dispels the darkness in the blind man and is able to see. On the first day of creation, there was darkness all over. And God, who is light, spoke, let there be light. And the light dispelled darkness. And the beauty in creation began to come forth. And what God did on the first day of creation, God continues to do every day. Dispelling darkness and revealing the beauty of creation. In today's first reading, God sent Samuel to go to the house of Jesse to anoint one of his sons as king of Israel. When Samuel arrived, Jesse presented seven of his sons. The screening began, one after the other, and the seven of them were disqualified. And Samuel must have thought to himself, maybe I dialed the wrong number. Maybe I got the wrong zip code. Was it not this house I was sent to? But before running into his final conclusion, he said to Jesse, 
Are these all the songs you've got? And then Jesse said, um, oh, yes. No, I think one more. There's one, but it's the youngest of them all. He's just out there with the sheep. And Samuel said, go get him. And sure enough, David, the youngest, arrived. And he was the choice. He was the divine choice. And he was anointed king of Israel. Come to think of it, David, who was not qualified to be part of the primary election, David, who was not qualified to be with his older siblings, eventually was anointed king over them all. David was hidden in the dark, but God, who is light, went in search of him and brought him out of darkness and made him king. When Jesse and his older sons sent David to go and be with a sheep, they did not realize that they were sending him to the seminary for formation to the priesthood. When they sent him to be with a sheep, they did not realize that they were sending him to boot camp to train as a soldier and to come out as a general in the army of Israel and to lead them to conquer their enemies. When they sent him, sent him to the fields to be with the sheep, they did not realize that they were preparing him to reflect and come out with a beautiful responsorial psalm of today, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. Having been with a sheep, he was able to come out with the beautiful psalm, The Lord is my shepherd. They did not realize that when they sent him to be with the sheep, they were sending him to train to become a shepherd over Israel, taking after the footsteps of the good shepherd. My dearly beloved in Christ, this is not just about David. This is not just about the man who was born blind. This is more importantly about you. This is more importantly about me. I do not know what has been keeping you awake all night of recent. I do not know the reason behind the tears you shed every night. I do not know why smile has now become a stranger to your face of recent. I do not know the reason behind your recent depression. But there's something I know, and that I know too well. I know that God who is light knows the beauty that is hidden inside you. And I know that what God did on the first day of creation, he continues to do every day. And that is to dispel the power of darkness and to bring out the beauty that is hidden in his creation. As we reflect on the theme of light and the story of how Jesus gave sight to the man who was born blind. We cannot but think about and talk about the blindness and the darkness that the world is currently experiencing due to the coronavirus, COVID-19 disease. Who would have thought Two weeks ago, that will be where we are today. Can you imagine the number of vacation plans, the number of weddings, the number of religious activities, religious gatherings, the number of parties, and other plans that have been disrupted as a result of this virus and the disease? Today is Letares Sunday. Last month, when we gathered 
for Ash Wednesday. Who would have thought then that four weeks later we will be celebrating Letare Sunday with empty churches? Just like two weeks ago, we had no idea that today will be what it is now. So also, no one can confidently tell what the world will be like tomorrow. Many world experts have been devastated by the effects of this virus and the disease. Many world experts have been humbled in all their learnings as a result of the coronavirus. So the world is in darkness. The world is experiencing blindness. Yes, the world is in darkness. Yes, even though the world is experiencing blindness, the church is inviting us to still celebrate Letare Sunday, Rejoice Sunday. A Sunday that gets its name from the first words of the traditional Latin entrance for this Mass. Letare, O Jerusalem, rejoice, O Jerusalem. Words taken from Isaiah chapter 66, verse 10. When Isaiah invited the Israelites to rejoice, they were still undergoing the devastating effect of being on exile. He did not invite them to rejoice as a way of denying their reality at that time. His focus was not on what they were going through. His focus was on God who owns Israel. God whose plans for his children are always for good. That gave him the confidence to invite Israel to rejoice. Similarly, today, as the church is inviting us to rejoice, it is not a way of inviting us to be in denial. Rather, it is a way of inviting us to rise above our present challenges and to focus on the fact that God is still on the throne. Yes, the world is in darkness. Yes, the world is experiencing blindness. But come to think of it. If Jesus could give sight to the man who was born blind, how would he not be able to restore health back to the world that God created and found to be good right from the very beginning. Hiding David with a sheep could not stop David from becoming the king when the time that God appointed arrived. God who is light is so powerful and nothing can stop the plans of God, nothing can stop the blessings of God. When God decides to give his blessing, no virus, no bacteria, no disease, no force can stop it once the time comes. He's the God that we trust in, and he keeps us going. And even if any force decides to fight against the blessings of God, it always happens that such blessings will be multiplied and enhanced. Recently, I came across a write-up on Facebook, which I found very encouraging. And uh, I made a copy of it to be sure I don't miss anything out of it. It was presented in the form of an exchange of words between Satan and Jesus. Satan began by bragging. I will cause anxiety I will cause fear and panic among human beings. I will shut down businesses. I will shut down schools. I will shut down places of worship. People will not be able to go to mass. I will shut down sporting events. And I will cause economic turmoil. 
And then Jesus replied, Okay, and after you have done that, this is what I will do. I will bring neighbors together. I will restore the family unit. I will bring dinner back to the kitchen table. I will help people to slow down their lives and appreciate what really matters. I will teach my children to rely on me and not on the world. I will teach my children to trust me and not their money and not their material resources. I will teach my children how to help one another. I will teach my children that I walk through the sacraments, but that I am not bound by the sacraments. And very importantly, I will teach my children that all human beings are equal. My dearly beloved in Christ, in the midst of all that we are going through, I say to you, fear not. Let us trust God now more than ever. Having done everything that is within our human limits, we leave all the rest in the hands of God. And may our trust in God never bring us to shame until we come to our heavenly inheritance through Christ our Lord. Amen.